Hey, okay. I think I'm live. Now's the best part where I'm live and by myself for like 30 seconds. Four people come in and I get to sit uh, by myself here. Uh, now I'm by myself uh, uh, talking to myself. That, that is the essence of chaos theory. And chat about some game stuff and things on my mind. Let's pull this thing up here. And I did the tweet because last time people were like, oh, I would love to know ahead of time. Ooh, turn that volume down. Hey, there's people. Hey, so Shinobu, you are bad request. Is that correct? Let me know if I got that right, man. Kalunatek, Cool Creek. Oh my God, Ty Z, Magitech, my boy, introverted, my boy. What's up, guys? Stakona. I've always wondered how you said your name, Stakona. Steak Sona. Hype, says Yay Walter. What's up? Kalunatic asks if I beat Doom yet. Um, I have a trick answer. And the answer is yes, but I beat it on the Xbox One last year. <laughs> um, I haven't played the Switch version yet. I'm too wrapped up with other things. And I even just started Battlefront, or Battlefront. Um, I have started Battlefront, which everyone can get mad at me for that. Uh, Skyrim. I finally started Skyrim today. So I've just been caught up with that stuff. So Sakona says show gameplay for videos. I don't know what you mean there. But yeah, I beat I beat Doom last year. And man, that game is so good. I cannot wait to finally do the Switch version. Um, Hi, Rob. Says the master. What's up, the master? Alex, what's up? What's up, man? Ark? I don't know Ark. I did get Battlefront, Ty Z. And Ark, you mean like Ark Survival or whatever? I think, Kimon, is what you're asking. And I know of the game. I think that was like a big deal on the PS4 a while ago. <clears throat> also, you should know where name comes from, too. BR Shinobu, is that what you're saying? And I don't even know if you confirmed if you are, in fact, bad request. Did I get that right? Yeah, you did say yes. Okay, cool. Very, very cool. Um, Magitech says, man, PlayStation 4 is $199 at Target, which I work at, and it's been selling like crazy all day. Really? That's interesting, man. And we haven't even... I mean, I guess the Black Friday hype has sort of started to a degree. That's why I even put it in the title, because all the leaked game sales for Black Friday have finally come out, which looks so fantastic. I'm going to be freaking broke by next week. And uh, yeah, so you're saying the PS4 is selling really crazy right now. I mean, dude, $199 for PS4, that's like a legit, that's a serious good price. PS4 is a really, really good console. So interesting to know that it's selling so well. I wonder, how's the Switch doing? You should let me know how the Switch is also selling. Or if they're always consistently sold out at the Walmart that you work at. I would think possibly. Genius of Battle says, Rob, yo, man. <laughs> how are you doing, buddy? Question, Ultra Moon or wait for 8th generation in 2018, 2019? Well, you ask a question, do you mean get one or the other? And I would say for Pokemon fans, of which I'm not really a Pokemon fan, why wouldn't you get both? I feel like Ultra Sun and, of course, the new one for the Switch, whatever that turns out to be, which there are rumors about that new Pokemon. That was something that literally was just breaking probably, I don't know, what, 40 minutes or an hour ago, and I saw some articles, and then OJ and Super Metal Dave made videos about it, and I was like, oh my god, this Pokemon thing is crazy. So I thought it was interesting, and maybe you guys would want me to talk about it, maybe you wouldn't, even though I don't really play Pokemon. I do certainly have thoughts on it. I work at Target Tech. You work at Target Tech. I'm third party. I can give you the inside scoops whenever you need me. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So you're like contracted by the Target you work at maybe? Is that what you mean? So you're not you're not employed by Target, but you work for an entity inside of Target is what it sounds like. And hey, man, I'm always down with the scoops. I got a couple of inside sources that give me some scoops here and there. Um, so hey, the more the better, man. I would, I would love to get some of that stuff. Stakona says there is no Pokemon next year. I agree. You guys know me, man. I'm totally predicting 2019 for the Switch Pokemon, the one that the rumors from today finally started from. But we certainly do not know. Okay, I'm getting stuff quickly here. I'm missing some stuff. Uh, well, the Shinobu name more than anything. I mean, Shinobu from No More Heroes Shinobu? Bad request? Is that what you're saying there? I mean, there's probably some other Shinobus out there that I might be familiar with. But the first one that comes to mind for me is... No More Heroes, the greatest of all the assassin characters, and somebody who came back in part two. So let me know if if that's what you're talking about. Oh, and you said yes. So there you go. Yeah, I know me some Shinobu, man. She the bomb. She is the bomb. Um, what did I miss? 
Arms need to be arms needs to be shown and talked about more, says Dakota. Yeah, you know, arms is in an interesting case right now, I think. I mean, I think the game is really, really good. I don't like love arms. I like arms. I think the production and the gameplay is like through the roof. Nintendo did their typical kick-ass thing. They knocked that game out of the park. It didn't, it's just it's something that doesn't jive with me the way like Splatoon jived with me and uh, on the Wii U and Splatoon 2. And it's weird because Nintendo's still supporting ARMS. We just got a brand new DLC character. I've yet to actually try him. He looks pretty sweet. He looks like he's right out of Breath of the Wild. I don't know if anyone feels that. I forget the guy's name, so forgive me. And uh, yeah, I wonder if maybe there's a better opportunity for Nintendo to do more with ARMS. I feel like we will get a sequel to ARMS, and Nintendo could have some really good opportunities to do some cool things there. Um, so I don't know, man. I think they need to push an online community with ARMS. That's probably the best way to move that forward 40 viewers already man you guys are awesome that is so cool i would love to get over 100 viewers i got over 100 viewers not in the last live stream i did but the one i think the week before that and that was incredible you guys came out in force i had like 80 or 95 likes on that on the live stream as well that was really awesome but anywho um let me see there's definitely at least one big title coming 2019 for oh magitech you don't dude thank you so much man for the one dollar donation you are the man, dude. I super appreciate using the super chat, man. Very cool. Um, anyway, so Introverted was saying, there's definitely at least one big title coming to 2019 for Switch. We don't know about it. If not Metroid or Pokemon, what do you think it is? Well, I think as far as Nintendo franchises, I think a couple of things are possible. I really do think that a new Super Mario Brothers is likely in the works, probably for next year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Of the, uh, of the many like mid-tier Nintendo franchises that I've discussed that could show up next year. I think that's a pretty likely one. And I also think that Animal Crossing could be the sneaky other big one that shows up in 2018. So I would love for it to be like a Pikmin, for example. I really want Pikmin. I think we're getting Star Fox eventually too, but I think that's way down the road. So for me, it's New Super Mario Brothers or Animal Crossing. I expect one or both of those also in uh, 2018. But we can't forget that also... Um, Fire Emblem, we're getting that Fire Emblem game unless that gets delayed, which isn't impossible. That could show up next year as well. And, uh, oh, dude, Dave, what's up, buddy? Oh, man, Super Metal Dave is in here. That's so cool, man. I'm glad you showed up. Uh, probably really quickly, it says, hey, man, just a quick question. When you live stream, are you just making the video unlisted after you get done? I haven't noticed any of these streams on your channel over the past few weeks. Yeah, man, that's kind of what I've been doing so far um, because it's just kind of like new to me to do live streams. Hence my super ghetto uh, webcam that I bought just to kind of test it out. Uh, John actually, Spawnwave John showed up on my first one and was asking me about the webcam. And I didn't know if I could get this up and running. So I just bought like a $25 little cheapy one. I'm going to upgrade that soon. And so I'm also like just not sure how I want to incorporate live streams. If I should keep them up, if I shouldn't, if they're like weird and awkward to have up after the fact or not. So I've been like leaving them unlisted and I've actually deleted them. But I'm thinking about keeping them live, keeping them up and viewable after they're complete in the future. And honestly, a couple of people have asked me about that, man. So I probably should just keep doing that. But thanks, dude. I super appreciate you asking that. I really wanted to make it on that live stream about uh, Star Wars and Battlefronts and all that the other night, dude. I really wish I could have gotten to it. But, you know, I, I work. You and I are like some of the only YouTubers out here on the West Coast, man. So we actually have the same time zone schedule, which is pretty cool. But it was cool you had YXBA on. I thought that was really, really neat to see you guys doing that, man. So I liked it. I, I would love to do a, a Star Wars or something else podcast with you soon, man. For sure. Okay. Questions are all over the place. What else? I'm so glad Dave showed up, dude. That's so cool, man. Uh, Fire Emblem is currently my must-have of 2018, says H. Takara. Are you looking forward to it, Rob? <clears throat> Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. I think that... We haven't had a console Skyrim, and I brought this up a couple of videos ago. Um, whatever the Radiant one was on the Wii. I can never remember Radiant Dawn, Path of Radiance. One is GameCube, one is Wii. I think Radiant, I think Path of Radiance is the GameCube one. Regardless, that Wii game was a long time ago, man. And I think that it could be a really, really great game to put on the Switch. We need a console version, man. And it would be portable and home console. So I think it's going to sell really, really well. Um, Skyrim on Switch or Assassin's Creed Xbox says one white Kong. Man, I just, I'm not an Assassin's Creed guy, so I'm probably not the best person to answer because I'm easily going to tell you 
then it should be Skyrim because Skyrim is great on whatever console. Skyrim just rocks, man. Um, but it is so good on Switch. I've been playing it all day on Switch on the free time I've had. And uh, it is so good. It is so cool playing Skyrim portable. I cannot believe the difference that that makes. I just, I mean, oh, another super chat. Sabbath, uh, thank you for the donation, Sabbath. You rock. And uh, here she says, I want Wario or Super Paper Mario 2. Honestly, a, another Paper Mario has a good chance at showing up. I think Nintendo for sure is not done with Paper Mario. But I do think they're going to take a break after Color Splash because, you know, that really bit them in the ass, so to speak. And I know some people who really loved it, but I know most people didn't. It was super controversial, unfortunately. God, it was beautiful looking, though, man. That looked so good. Um, Wario... I think it's probably also not dead, man. I think we might get another kind of Wario game. But I could almost see Nintendo... They could do one of two things with the Wario. They could surprise us and make like a new Wario Land, which might be like, what, the third or fourth maybe Wario Land game? Like on the 3DS next year, like one of the very last 2018 3DS games. Or they might wait a couple of years and make a new one for the Switch. So I could see them doing one or the other there. I I want a Waluigi game. <laughs> I freaking love Waluigi. And I want a Waluigi game. And one day it'll happen and I will explode with joy when Waluigi finally gets the justice he deserves in his own game. Waluigi Walla World. You heard it quoted here. I coined it. It needs to happen. Um, Evil Angel asks if I've seen Justice League. No, we were going to go today, but then we were supposed to do band rehearsal. That was the plan, but even band rehearsal fell through. So we're like, forget it. We're going to go next weekend. I'm excited. I really believe I'm going to enjoy Justice League, but I'm really sad about how it's been turning out, man. I'm really sad for DC. They've made a lot of mistakes, and I think it sucks to see. And I want Justice League to be great, and I want DC to succeed, but they have just been all over the place behind the scenes, man. Like, controversy has, with every single movie they've made. There's been, con except for Man of Steel. And, and some people don't even like Man of Steel, but it didn't have any controversy. So I don't know, but I'm excited. Um, what did I see? Magitech said I should use OBS to stream instead of Hangouts. Yeah, I, I need to figure that stuff out because I could, there's like OBS or there's, uh, what's another one? I've heard OJ mention another one. He's talked to me about it. Um, damn, I can't remember, but that stuff, uh, why'd I block you? Ahmed, are you asking me? I, did, I haven't blocked you. So obviously you're not blocked because you're right there. So I don't know. Oh, Jason, what's up, man? There's my my IRL homie says you might go might go Wednesday. And then next week with you. Sweet, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Let me know. I kind of want you to see it first. So you can let me know how it is, man. Uh, anyway, uh, Batman versus Superman and Wonder Woman were better films than Justice League. I've heard everyone's got different opinions on it, Tony. So I'm really curious to see. Uh, my buddy Jason, who's in the chat, he was even going to, we were originally going to all go together today and then it all, everything fell through. It was just a ridiculous day. Um, so definitely next week for sure. Um, what else? Skyrim does rock on Switch, says Tony. I agree. The Master says, Rob, I don't think New Super Mario Bros. is mid-tier because the first two sold over the 30 million. I mean, you make a good point, I guess, to be fair. I guess mid-tier, I'm probably using it in a not accurate way, to be fair. So I'll give you credit there um, because those games sell insanely well. I mean, they sell so... The Wii version, not Wii U, the Wii version of New Super Mario Brothers did gangbusters. So I guess it sells in top tier, but I just, I guess because I just don't really care as much for it. I'm just like, whatever, New Super Mario. I think, I guess I'm thinking more quality when I talk about tiers than sales. So the galaxies and the odysseys in the, of the world, and even 3D world to a degree, I think that's a little bit in between, but it's mostly more top tier in terms of quality. So just my opinion though. Um, so Cool Greek is asking me, do I think Star Wars Battlefront 2 is worth buying just for the single player campaign? That's hard to answer for a couple of reasons. The biggest is I've yet to complete it, so I cannot tell you the exact length of it. But I can tell you two things about it. One, it's freaking awesome so far. It's It plays great. It looks awesome. The narrative and the story and the characters are so fantastic. The acting is off the charts. And it's so cool what it's adding to the lore post return of the Jedi and what it's going to cover up into the force awakens. Also, I read the prequel novel when that came out in July, uh, Christy golden's battlefront and Squ inferno squad. I read that when it came out to get the backstory on Iden Versio and the other inferno squad members that make it out of that book into the game. No spoilers. 
And so I'm picking up on all these cool little th hints that they're dropping. And I, I know the character from the book and now seeing it on screen is actually really exciting. So I'm loving it, but I don't think it's supposed to be very long. So it's tough for me to say with all the other controversy around it, man. I mean, if you're diehard Star Wars like I am and you know you ain't going to spend any money on microtransactions, then I would say yes. But if you're worried about that stuff and you think you might dump money into microtransactions, then I would say no. So it's a really tough call there. Uh, H. Takara says Seattle weather has been crappy lately, hasn't it? Been trying to do stuff outside, but instead end up doing get togethers. Another perk of the switch. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been it's been rainy here all day and I'm not in Seattle. I'm a couple of hours away from Seattle, but we usually have fairly similar weather. And uh, yeah, man, that's the Pacific Northwest, yo. It's just, uh, it's rainy, it's gloomy, it's overcast. I actually like that, though. Some people don't, but I really, really enjoy it. Um, Orpheus Prime says, so what's up with Smash Bros. on the Switch? Especially since Smash Bros. has been trademarked. I mean, we don't know, but I think it's coming soon, man. I mean, really, 20, 2018 could be the year that we get Smash. And it's all about, it's really all about if they go with the remaster of the Wii U version, that has a good chance it's showing up at 2018. If it's a brand new Smash, it's probably going to be 2019. So that's pretty much what's going on there. I mean, it's really, really tough to say. Uh, did I get Rex's armor in Breath of the Wild? No, I haven't turned Breath of the Wild on since that happened, actually. I've, I've missed it. Uh, Tanner says it's real short, but fun. I assume you mean the, uh, the Battlefront campaign. So, uh, Valkyria, Valkyria Chronicles 4 announced for the Switch. Is that true? What? I'm not like a, a diehard fan. I'm not really super familiar with it. Um, I think the first one was PlayStation 1, though, and I actually did play that. If I'm thinking of the right series. Let me, was that announced? Twitch. 32 minutes ago, it says Sega announces Valkyria, Valkyria ugh, Chronicles 4 for PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Hey, that's awesome because that becomes a multi-platform release across all platforms, including Switch, on day one. That is that is really, really sweet. So 20 likes is super cool. Thank you guys so much. The likes, I've learned this from uh, going on to the Spawncast with John and everybody, that the likes really help get the uh, the live stream out to people. So, you know. If you're enjoying it, it doesn't hurt to press that like button. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, uh, this is, what am I missing here? Seattle area has occasional snow, but not often. Man, we had a lot of snow last year. Oh my gosh. I mean, this year, sorry. Like this winter, early in the year in January, it was absolutely insane. uh bad request says i see you're enjoying skyrim on switch so much rob i mean i am like here's the thing with skyrim you guys skyrim to me when, even when it came out in 2011 it was one of the first pc games i really spent a lot of time with i bought day one that i bought on pc instead of on a console at the time i had a 360 and a ps3 and i, I went pc on that one i think my pc was even new at the time and that game blew me away and I know how it's not for everybody because some people don't like Bethesda's engines. They are super glitchy and buggy and they do ridiculous ass things. And that's all completely true. Like the Bethesda engine is ridiculous on the surface level, but it's really cool and badass and epic and so many fun things to do underneath the, the superfluous stuff of like characters sometimes say the same line like three or four times in a row. Um, and so that when that game came out in 2011, oh my God. I was so freaking into Skyrim. Um, I downloaded like the the modded texture pack for it. It's the only like kind of mod I ever accessed for any kind of PC game to make the graphics look even that much better. And I spent probably 215 hours into that game and still never beat it. It was so fun. And now that it's on Switch, I mean, I was excited for it. Like I said before, it was the second game we ever officially saw running on the Switch, even though Bethesda was super playing coy about about sky oh that's not a skyrim oh that's not uh confirmed i don't know which we you know whatever sometimes people have axes in video games and it's not skyrim but we all knew that that was skyrim in the uh switch reveal trailer because if you guys remember the switch reveal trailer the first thing we saw was the homeboy sitting on a couch playing zelda with his dog next to him and we had already seen all the zelda e3 stuff so we were like super familiar with zelda and then it cut to the guy 
in his apartment playing Skyrim on his TV. And then he takes it on the dock and takes it with him on the plane and all over. And it's like, whoa, Skyrim. Second game we ever officially saw running on the Switch, even though Bethesda was lying to us at the time. And now that it's out over a year later, I'm just shocked at how good it is. And, and not only just how good it is, just how how game-changing it feels to have Skyrim, a game like Skyrim specifically on the Switch. If Zelda wasn't a launch title, we would probably say that about Zelda if it came out seven months after launch. But we kind of like, we already started our Switch game time with Zelda right off the gate. So we were sort of like accustomed to that from day one. But now it's been a long time since we've had a game this big in scope on the Switch. And so playing this game portable and on my TV and whatever is great. And it's also reminding me, you guys who are Skyrim fans out there can tell me if you agree with this. What it's reminding me of is how even six years later, that game still holds up. It's still incredible. The glitches and the datedness do stand out a lot more now for sure. They absolutely do. But it's still so fun. It still looks incredible. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that they they bumped up the visuals in this Switch version. I mean, it's probably not maybe up to remaster standards for like the PS4 and Xbox One remaster. But damned if it's not beautiful. Excuse me, on the Switch. I mean, it does look that good. So I feel like... I feel like Bethesda put some extra love specifically into this version. And considering it took them a freaking year to get it out after they showed it to us, they, they should have. They obviously spent time on it. And it's like, wow, Skyrim is still amazing. The music is the best. The way Skyrim's music works. And I'm just, I'm just going off and ranting about Skyrim right now. But seriously, Skyrim on the Switch is impressive. And although I've yet to play Doom, I, I, I promise I will. It's just because I've already, I just played that game last year. So I'm just holding off till I beat some other games. I'm sure Doom is the is the obviously more impressive game to have portable on the Switch. But for me, playing Skyrim so far as a third-party game that's as huge scale really basically confirms all the excitement we had for all the third parties on the Switch, man. And, and what's possible on the Switch. It looks great. It sounds great. It plays great. It feels great. It runs great. It's just insane. So look out, man. All my prediction videos about a strong 2018 Switch... I just believe now more than ever because I think first and third party are going to show up in force in 2018. John on the spawn cast did remind me this the weekend before last when I was on it. He's like, well, it does seem like third parties are jumping on later than initially. So we might have a gap in time while they prepare their games. So maybe 2018 is where we get a lull in third parties as they announce them, but they don't have them ready for release until 2019. And that was a super good point he made. I mean, he was absolutely correct on that. Um, so maybe they are a little bit slow to release in 2018. But at worst, I expect a lot of third-party game announcements in 2018. And I'm going to stand by it. Two games I think we will get to play in 2018 on our Switch. You're hearing me say it now. Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto V. That's, that's my bets. I'm placing my bets right now. I might be wrong, and that's okay. But my bets are on those two games, man. I think that they're going to happen. So... Anyway, I had a lot to say, but now I need to actually check in on what you guys are saying because I'm just totally fanboying out over Skyrim on the Switch and how absolutely stupidly incredible it is so far. Let's see what you guys have to say. I'm missing so many questions. Uh, Roblox for Switch. I don't know what that is, but I like the name because it has Rob in it. So that's pretty cool. Um, Freaky Tat says, what do you think the chances of a sequel to Breath of the Wild for the next Zelda game are? I think that they're... Mm, they're okay. Trakov asks, asks if I like Crisis, and I think that they're okay. I, I actually, as a colorblind guy, I struggle to play Crisis. It's really hard for me to play that because um, of my handicap, but it is really fun gameplay. Anyway, um, next Zelda could be a sequel, but I think it's not the most likely. I'd probably put it at like 30, 35% that it's a sequel, but for the most part, I expect the next Zelda to probably be something new. Now, it might use the same engine. I know we all know the engine's really impressive and there's a lot of opportunities there. So Nintendo would probably use that engine for a couple of things. Um, when it comes to the next Zelda, I mean, it's really a matter of if it even releases on the Switch or if it's going to be ready for the next console. And does it make sense for them to still use that engine? Would they want to continue the story in Breath of the Wild? I would be okay with it. I would actually even enjoy that because I think that the, uh, the sequels they've done before which are um, Zelda 2, Adventures of Link, Haters Gonna Hate. That's a good game. I love Zelda 2. 
Um, of course, Majora's Mask, and of course, A Link Between Worlds. And I don't know if I'm missing any other ones. I think those are the only direct sequel Zelda games we've been given. I guess Phantom Hourglass is like a sequel to uh, Wind Waker and stuff, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, those games are good. I think, I mean, Majora's Mask was an incredible follow-up to Ocarina of Time, which at the time, the idea of following up Ocarina of Time with a worthy sequel was like pretty much an impossible feat. And Nintendo, I think, did it. So, I mean, a sequel to Breath of the Wild, sure. I say bring it on, you know? Uh, okay, I am missing a lot. Ask me questions, guys. I love it. Uh, where's the 500 likes paper behind you? <laughs> yeah, I actually thought about that because John has so much success putting a little sign behind him that says 500 likes or 600 likes, and he always gets to it. Of course, he gets better viewership, and his channel is much, much bigger than mine. But I do need to do like a little sign right here. That's I, If I got to like 100 likes a video, uh, a live stream, I think that would probably be the best way. Um, so someday, you guys, I say if you're enjoying the stream, continue to like it because it is super helpful again for the algorithm. So, and at 91, 92 viewers right now. So that is incredible. Thank you guys for showing up. I super appreciate it. I'm hoping to hit that 100 mark again for my second time ever. Uh, Nintendo is sponsoring the Holy cow out of Skyrim for the switch. Yeah, Tony, they really are. And I think that, I think that we're just seeing like a Bethesda Nintendo kind of love fest right now this year, man. I think that they're both really on board with each other. I think that they've, they're have they both seeing the advantages to each other. I think that Nintendo has realized we've been shunning these Western third-party developers. We've been shunning third parties as a whole. We need to find a way to get some of the most important third parties on board, Japanese or Western. And so they, they picked a smart one to align with, with Bethesda, obviously. And they probably went out of their way to court Bethesda hardcore. And now I think we have Bethesda, who's like all in on the Switch. And they're like, you know what? We know what it's like to get caught with your pants down. We all saw the whole industry react when everyone didn't think the Wii was going to be a big hit. And then surprise, it was like the biggest hit ever. And then all these companies scrambled to get games on it. And I think that, and I'm sure some money was exchanging hands behind the scenes too, you guys. Somebody paid somebody to make it happen. But I'm willing to bet that Bethesda was like, you know what? We're with you, Nintendo. We see the potential. We believe it's a great console. You showing us how easy it is to develop. I'm sure Nintendo is working very closely with Bethesda's developers to make the games run the best on the Switch because Nintendo knows how to make games work right on the Switch. And so I just think that they're all like, we're in. Bethesda, Nintendo, they're working together. So if Nintendo does this with other companies, if we get the Rockstar thing to continue, if we get, I know you guys are going to yell about this, but if we get Activision on board in the right way, things like that, we start to get some of these bigger games that even if maybe you don't like their these companies or their games, the games are big deals and they sell to a lot of people and they attract a lot of gamers. And that just means probably more system sales of the switch. So, all right. 103 viewers. Badass. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that. It says a lot of fun to do these rather than Activision blizzard says, uh, Takara. I totally agree. Yeah. Talkie hundred viewers, man. That's pretty cool. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, Activision, it's like I'm somebody who likes Call of Duty, so I want to see Call of Duty on the Switch. That's the only Activision I want out of it. Blizzard would be great. Bring on Diablo. Bring on Overwatch. These games make sense on the Nintendo Switch. They absolutely do. And I think a lot of us know it. So I would say those would be that's that's a that's a great team up, man, if Blizzard started seeing the advantage to releasing on the Switch. Anyone from the Caribbean here? Oh, man. Oh, bad request. Five pounds. Thank you so much, bad request. You are awesome for doing that. I super, super appreciate it. I was like, I think it was because um, when I was checking in on uh, OJ's live stream, like the yesterday or the day before, I saw BR Shinobu as bad request. And that's when I was like, hey, I know, I know bad request. But I also know BR Shinobu. And that's when I realized you guys are the same person. So thank you for the donation very much, Bad Request. You are awesome. Uh, Diablo, the Diablo franchise would be awesome on the Switch, says Tony. I agree. Um, here is a, Omar says Aruba. Like you're right. That's so funny. Um, yeah, uh, Diablo, it's interesting because I also think of that game, The Nine Parchments, which we know is coming to Switch eventually as well. And that game is a very similar sort of game uh, to Diablo, at least in terms of like isometric sort of uh, graphics and viewpoint gameplay. 
it's like up to four players kind of co-op and Diablo does similar things. So, Oh, John says, sorry about your Broncos, bro. Off, off year this year. You ain't kidding off year, but you know what? I mean, my girl, excuse me, my, my girlfriend and I talk about this all the time. We had four amazing Peyton years. You lose a quarterback like Peyton and you win a Super Bowl. You're going to have to rebuild. That's what's going to happen. You know? Yeah. Omar says drinking beer while streaming. Yeah, man. Um, that's what's going to happen. So we knew that we were going to be getting a, uh, um, a rebuilding year and that's totally fine. Josh Wagner says up and corner right here. Keep it up, bro. Oh, up and comer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. I super appreciate it. I would like a Mario maker port says knack Jojo. Yeah. So I've definitely discussed, uh, the fact that I believe that Mario maker is definitely a good shot to come to the Nintendo switch. I really think that there's an opportunity there. It's tricky when you think about doing a Mario Maker because the Wii U version relied on the touchscreen. Even the damn 3DS version relied on that touchscreen. So suddenly we'd have a Switch that does have a touchscreen, but you can't use the touchscreen while you're also looking at your TV or another screen. And I think that that would hurt the Mario Maker Wii U version being ported over. So I think of a new Maker game. I think of a new Mario Maker I think even more of, I brought this up on a stream, like a Nintendo maker, where maybe you get all sorts of eight and 16 bit sprites from all the different Nintendo franchises. You get, you get Samus sprites and Mario sprites and Link sprites, and you can just make all sorts of weird, wacky games. It would be like the Super Smash Brothers of maker games. And I think there's an awesome opportunity there, you know, a really, really awesome, awesome opportunity. <clears throat> yeah, Valkyria Chronicles. A lot of people talking about Valkyria Chronicles. Would you like to see Paper... Paper Mario Thousand Year Door Remastered for Switch. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of at the point where, I mean, any kind of remaster probably makes sense. It's like, I don't want to say no to bringing great games back, but we also don't want to get super, super crazy with remasters either. I mean, there's a balance you really have to have to make there. So it's really, really tough. Tanner says, holy shit, Rob, Nintendo maker, man. I don't know if that's an excited thing or not, but I mean, yeah, tell me that's not a cool idea. Nintendo maker, dude, you got, that's a great idea, Nintendo. You can have it for free. Just make that game. Uh, make the make the gamepad backwards compatible, says Be Wild. I don't know, man. I mean, I love the gamepad, but no, that's not possible. There's no way that that's possible. So we could dream. Omar says, was playing Skyrim the whole day and I'm having a blast. The game is really good. Yeah. Is it your first time? Omar, you should tell us if it's your first time playing Skyrim. It is really super good. Excited, yeah. Um, NK3, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right there. NK3 says, a while ago, you mentioned you were interested in doing a review of the Prime Trilogy. That is actually true. I did say that. Is that still a thing? Metroid Samus Returns would be a cool review too. Yeah, I definitely am still thinking about wanting to do that. It's tough because reviews take a lot of time and a little bit more time than I usually have available with videos, unless I wanted to do a less awesome review where it's just me talking. And I know most of my videos are just me talking when I'm talking about an idea. But if I was going to do a review, I want to be able to include a lot of footage and, and clever editing and stuff. So but I still do want to do that. One day I might actually do that. I and mean, people were really interested in the idea of me doing a 2017 review of the Prime Trilogy. And the thing is what I wanted to do was review each one individually, like a five minute review of one, two, and three, and kind of do a summation of the entire Metroid Prime Trilogy, especially because I absolutely believe that that is coming next year. Um, hey, Patrick is here, Nintendo Talk. What's up, buddy? Stormcloak or Empire? Empire for me, man. Stormcloaks are fine, but I'm an Empire guy. I'm an Imperial guy. So yeah, Metroid reviews, I'm probably going to do those sometime soon. It would be silly not to take advantage of that. Samus Returns would just be me gushing about how great that game was for the most part. Um, yeah, a lot of people are talking about the Valkyria 4 news. I mean, that's really cool coming to Switch. Let me pull that back up real quick, guys, and double check and see what it says here. Uh, but now Valkyria Chronicles 4 is happening. It's coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch in 2018. Don't worry, publisher Sega says the game is coming to North America and Europe too. So there we go. That is really sweet. Um, so you guys remind me who are more familiar, if my if my memory was correct, was that first game on the PS1? Because I think that I played that back when I was in high school. I really feel like I did. Knack Jojo says, I'm playing L.A. Noir. I never thought it would come out on Switch. Loved it in 2011 and still loving it. 
I forgot the cases, so it feels new. That's cool. That's kind of how I feel almost with Skyrim too. Um, so I'm really curious about L.A. Noir. It's just because it's cool that it came to uh, to the Switch, but I'm just not interested in the game too much. I was watching Sean Long stream it a couple of days ago, RGT85, and that was cool. Like it was, I mean, the streams are fun because he's just bullshitting and chatting with everybody while he's playing, and I was just playing Call of Duty or something. So. Um, but it was cool to kind of get an idea of like what the game really looked like in motion. And it looks great on the Switch. It really does look impressive on the Switch. But it's like the the, the gangster thing doesn't super jump out on me. Um, <clears throat> I want a 2D Mario game in the same vein as Sonic Mania. I mean, yeah, me too, Isaac. And you know, that's one of the reasons why Mario Maker didn't jump out as as much to me. Like the game's great, but I didn't love Mario Maker because it made me realize I kind of wish Nintendo just made a game that way as opposed to just giving the tools for us to make games. Cause like, I don't really want to make levels. I like playing levels, but I don't want to make them. So, I mean, Mario Maker is obviously incredible for what it was. I wouldn't necessarily change it, but it made me realize, you know, I want Nintendo to just make another Mario game like this. And when you talk about a 2D Mario game in the same vein as Sonic Mania, that's what that would be. It literally would be an 8 or a 16-bit side-scrolling Mario game. A brand new one with all new levels. How freaking cool would that be? And now we've got the all the 8-bit Mario stuff in uh, Odyssey. Imagine if Nintendo tried to make like a game or a downloadable package that was all that stuff. Brand new levels created just for it. That's a really cool idea. So anything is possible for sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, let me do this. Oh, that's my Black Friday thing. Yeah, I pulled up all, a list of all these Black Friday games because I was like, dude, there's so much. There is so, so much. <clears throat> Spike Gaming Hub says, these nostalgia blinded idiots can't see the abysmal storage underpowered overpriced trash in the Switch. <laughs> so it's a trolley guy. Hey, man, if you don't like the Switch and it's not for you, that's fine. You do, you do you, man. I ain't no one going to tell you what to buy and what to like and not to like. So, but I love the switch. I think most people in the chat probably love the switch. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, Trakeoff says, what do you think is the future of Sonic now that Sonic Forces has gotten mixed reviews? <clears throat> I'll even say as somebody who actually still wants to play Sonic Forces and give it a shot. And I will on Black Friday. I wouldn't even call the reviews mixed for Sonic Forces. I mean, let's be honest. The reviews are mostly pretty bad. Famitsu's was great. Sean Long liked the game. Pretty much everyone else I've talked to or heard hated the game. Even Robert Gaming With Me, who I used to podcast with, he's a big Sonic fan like I am, and he hates that game. Um, that being said, Sonic still ain't dead because Sonic Mini was a huge hit, and I think Sonic Forces might even be selling okay. And if that game makes enough money, we'll get another Sonic game. But I really do want... You know, I've said how if Sonic Forces turns out to be just okay, just an okay game at $40, I'll be cool with it. And that is definitely true. That being said, I do want Sonic to become better again. I want it to be kind of what it used to be. It probably will never live up to the glory that the series was back in the 16-bit era when I was a kid. But I would like to see it get kind of close to that. I think Sonic deserves that. But what are you going to do? Uh, B Wild says, do you think Metroid Prime 4 will be overhauled like Mario and Zelda? How could Nintendo make the FPS reinvented compared to the old ones? Dude, it's a good question. And I have been asked that question before. And it's funny because that sort of relates to the Pokemon rumors. So I should probably touch on the Pokemon thing in a minute. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know. And I can move on to the Pokemon thing in a sec. But as far as Metroid, as far as Metroid Prime 4, would, would Nintendo try to change Metroid Prime 4 in a similar way that they did to Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey? First, while they did do a lot for Odyssey, I don't think it's as big of a polar shift for the Mario universe as Breath of the Wild was for Zelda. But it was a shift. It was a small shift. It was a change. Would they do the same for Metroid? I'm of the belief that they're also not going to do a whole lot to the Metroid Prime formula. I think they're going to do more the Odyssey thing for Metroid Prime 4 than the Breath of the Wild thing. And I kind of think that's probably good because honestly, this isn't like... Metroid, Defense Force, Alpha Go, like it's Metroid Prime 4. It is the fourth game, a sequel to already established games and sequels. So it has to do very similar things. It can't be so different from previous games. Breath of the Wild was just Breath of the Wild. It's like the question I had earlier about a Breath of the Wild 2. 
A Breath of the Wild 2 should probably feel pretty similar to Breath of the Wild 1. But if the next Zelda is The Legend of Zelda and the Staff of No Real Significance, high five if you get that reference, then it's okay for them to do another crazy different thing, just like with Metroid. So, you know, there's a long answer to your question, but I feel like they'll probably do something more like Mario Odyssey, whereas Mario Odyssey was the same basic skeleton and structure and formula of a 3D Mario game, but they changed the main gameplay mechanic hook, and they changed a couple of things and added a little bit more open-worldiness to it than the other previous games had been, and that's Mario Odyssey, and it's absolutely incredible for that. I feel like Metroid Prime 4 will have the same basic skeleton of what the Prime games, the first three Prime games, has been. It's going to be in first person, it's going to have the similar visor effect. It's going to probably have a scan visor and different sort of, you know, the other visors that you can use. You'll probably be able to call her gunship around from area to area and things like that. But then they'll add some other things. She's going to have new weapons and upgrades that we've never seen. There might even be a main upgrade mechanic hook that changes the game, which, by the way, Echoes and Corruption both had. So <clears throat> Metroid Prime 2 used the Echoes visor. That was the hook to, for Echoes. And then Corruption, the hook was she's corrupted by Phazon, so she could overload herself with Phazon and do Phazon blasts, which helped her fight enemies and traverse through the world. And they're going to do a similar thing in, in Prime 4, at least I hope. Keep it Prime, but just add a couple of things and give one little main gameplay hook. So that's that's kind of what I expect. Um, really good question. And so anyway, I should go on to the Pokemon thing. You guys obviously know the Pokemon rumor which is a very similar thing. Apparently it came from Easy Allies. Uh, Super Metal Dave, who was in the chat earlier, I assume he's probably gone for now, which is fine. He made a video and he actually included a clip, which I really appreciated, of Michael Damiani from Easy Allies. And he basically said that he has a source, a couple of reliable sources who knows that they are. I'm missing all of your guys' comments and questions. I'm so sorry, guys. Dynamite Penguin says, hey, rule of two review, huge fan. Wondering your thoughts on the Rayman series. I will come back to you in a quick... Maybe I should do that instead of go on to Pokemon. <laughs> I should get to some of your guys' questions because Pokemon will end up taking up quite a bit of time here. Um, wondering your thoughts on the Rayman series. Have you played it? I, per I personally consider it the second best platforming franchise after Mario. Well, I love Rayman. I go back to... Uh, Patrick says he just talked about it on the podcast how great a live action Metroid movie would be. Yeah, they were going to do that a long time ago, Patrick, a live action Metroid with John Woo as the director. Um, getting sidetracked. Dynamite asks about Rayman. I mean, the first Rayman, I, I played it on the PlayStation 1 and the Atari Jaguar, and I still have my Atari Jaguar copy. Love the first Rayman. Rayman 2 is definitely one of the absolute, probably top three or four best 3D platforming games ever. Rayman 3 was pretty good. And then the two newer ones, Origins and Legends, are also incredible. So I love, love, love Rayman. Um, I don't know if it's not my personal second favorite platforming franchises, but it is really good. So you have good taste. You have really, really good taste. Microtransactions, watch for microaggressions. <laughs> um, let's see. Eric says, finish what you were talking about. Heard from good sources. LOL. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll just go back. I'll go back to the Pokemon thing. Um, so the whole idea, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole idea is that Michael Damiani heard this rumor about Pokemon on the Switch. You're welcome, Dynamite Penguins, on the Switch. And apparently they were planning on doing the same old, same old thing. It was going to be, I think it's an eighth generation Pokemon game. You Pokemon experts can tell me if that's right below but the same thing that the previous Pokemon mainline games had been doing. And they were going to do that for the Switch. They're like, it's a tried and true formula. The fans love it. The fans expect it. it. They always sell well. They always review well. Leave Pokemon alone. But Breath of the Wild was a huge polar shift that did amazing things for that series, changed it incredibly, and people responded more positively than they have to a Zelda game in a very, very long time. And then Mario Odyssey at um, E3 was a huge hit. They saw everything going on there and it was a smaller but still a change to the Mario formula. And so the rumor is that the rumor that Damiani basically heard was the uh, uh oh my god, Game Freak. I almost said Niantic. I'm sorry. Game Freak basically says, you know, maybe there's something to this changing it up. Maybe we need to do what was the word? Do something disruptive to Pokemon the way Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey have been disruptive to those series. And suddenly it sounds like 
there was a decision, maybe even recently in the development of the new Pokemon, for them to change the change the approach to this new Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch. Which means, and again, I'm talking to somebody who hasn't played a Pokemon game. I don't, I'm not against Pokemon. I just haven't played it. I don't play it. But whatever they've done to the previous games to make them the way they are, like, like turn-based battles, I believe, uh, that's going away. Or they're changing something about it. They want it to be different for Pokemon the way Breath of the Wild was different for Zelda. And so people are just all over about this. And I got to tell you, I think it's interesting. For diehard Pokemon fans, I could see why somebody is maybe like super scared of this idea, isn't into it, very worried, very nervous, doesn't want that. Just make just make Pokemon the way Pokemon's supposed to be, but put it on the Switch with better graphics, yada, yada, yada. And that's great. I, I mean, I totally understand and respect that. Honestly, since I'm not a Pokemon fan, I think that's a fine thing to do. But as somebody who's not into Pokemon currently, and I've been saying for years, a huge epic console Pokemon game might be the first one I try. When I hear that they're considering, according to the rumor, that they want to change up the formula the way Breath of the Wild changed Zelda, that actually gets me, as a non-Pokemon fan, a little bit more excited. Keep in mind, I would never say that that's what they should do. I would rather they just make diehard Pokemon fans happy. I don't want them to make me happy. I'm not a Pokemon fan. They don't have to make Rob happy. They need to make you guys happy who are Pokemon fans. But in a world where they decided to make this huge change to a no Pokemon, I, as the non-Pokemon fan, I'm like, okay, well, consider me interested. Show me what you got. Let me see what you're going to do. And I know this will be blasphemy, so forgive me if it's going to offend Pokemon fans. I would like something like more like a real-time battle system. I'm even seeing a couple people as it, as this chat goes by talk about real-time battles. Give me real-time battle. You can make it like an action game with RPG elements. That would probably be my favorite. But I feel like a better compromise is a real-time battle system that still operates on a pseudo-turn-based thing. To me, I think of something like Xenoblade, where it is real-time. It is based on your character's location and movement and their proximity to each other. But everyone is still kind of going on their own automatically based on where you are and what moves you're selecting and you're accessing your arts to do special moves and all these different things. That would be a cool way to do a new change to Pokemon. Um, it's kind of like what the KOTOR game was, the first Knights of the Old Republic. That was like the first time I saw them do that, where those games operate on like a D20 die roll system that's happening like behind the scenes that the player isn't involved in to determine how actions are taking effect, how, how and when attacks are happening, how what the likelihood uh, of landing your attack is, if there's a critical hit or not. All that stuff is behind the scenes like D20 rules. And I believe... I, OJ could probably confirm this or not, but I believe that Xenoblade has kind of always done that same sort of thing. They feel very similar to the KOTOR thing, but either way, a new Pokemon, possibly a, a whole different formula. I say make it an action RPG or make it something more like a real-time battle system RPG. I also, it reminds me of Tales of Symphonia. I've only ever played Tales of Symphonia 1 and 2, not the other Tales games. So I don't know if they all do this, but Tales of Symphonia operated on a real-time battle system where you engage in battle, but then you're just running around and you're slashing with your weapons and doing all those kinds of things. So, excuse me, that would be another cool way, I think, to do Pokemon in a way that would get me excited. So, yeah, what do you guys say? Let me let me run through here and see what you guys are saying about uh, Pokemon and the possible rumors and the changes. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Trey Aze says, yeah, like the Xenoblade battle system. Um, Sabbath says make a play like a Diablo hybrid. That would be pretty cool for sure. Um, Patrick at Nintendo Talk says my expectations for Pokemon switch are way too high. And I know it <laughs> you think, man, I mean, I don't know, like Nintendo, the, the current Nintendo, the 2017 Nintendo switch Nintendo is, is pretty badass, man. They are on their a game. Like we've almost never seen. So again, I have no experience with Pokemon, so I can't really talk to it. But I feel like there's a good shot that they knock out this Pokemon the same way they've done with Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and even Splatoon 2 and what I think they're going to do with Metroid Prime 4. So I don't know. I mean, I get it, though. You 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 feel like you put too much faith into something like like their new Pokemon game and maybe it just bites in the ass. But man, you never know. Mac Jojo says, turn-based for me, that is Pokemon. See, I get that. I totally get that, you guys. Diehard Pokemon fans probably have a certain expectation, and that's normal. That makes a lot of sense, man. Anyone who's a diehard for any series, 
you want that expectation met. You change it too much. It doesn't feel like the series I love. And now I'm mad and you made a bad game. Star Fox Zero is a really good example of that. A game I like, but that has problems. <laughs> and so that's when that's when that can happen. Yay, Walter says, I'd be fine with some fundamental changes to the formula, but the core turn-based battle mechanics should remain intact, in my opinion. Yeah, so that's, again, tough for me to say because I don't know too much about all that stuff. I just know it's turn-based, and I know that, is it a Professor Oak or somebody or Oak City? There's an Oak something is, like, really important, <laughs> and that's about all I know. So I don't know what other things they would have to change to make it feel appropriate for a Pokemon game. <clears throat> Uh, what are the chances of Nintendo helping Sega out with the next 3D Sonic? And do you think it would make a better game? I absolutely think it would make a better game. I mean, it's hard not to think that Nintendo working on any platform, or let alone uh, a Sonic game with Sega, wouldn't make that a much, much better game. And we've all wanted that forever, and I just don't know if it's ever going to happen. It's not impossible, but it sure should happen, man. It really should happen. Um, Shinobi Jordan says, changing the formula the a little bit but keep it turn-based so yeah you guys tell me who are pokemon fans would let's just talk about the battle system do you feel like it's okay if they change all sorts of stuff provided they keep the battle system turn-based or are you cool with or into the idea of them changing the turn-based battle system and making it something more real time if everything else stayed the same so you guys tell me real time or turn-based battle system what do you guys prefer who are pokemon fans Chrono Loop says, I want Pokemon to be awesome, but I don't expect them to do anything outstanding with it. Pokemon is awesome, but seeing how Pokemon runs on the 3DS and how safe they played, I doubt it. Well, I hear what you're saying, but now it's going to be on the Switch. So that, I feel like, changes the game when it comes to Pokemon. Uh, Ryo says, I want my Sonic Adventure 3, Sega. Yeah, I love Sonic Adventure 3. Why not? I'm down with that. The first one was freaking awesome in 1999. Didn't age very well, though. Uh, Shinobi says, I prefer turn-based. Light Swordsman says, turn-based. I really want the actual control. I really want to actually control the Pokemon, not just give them commands. Yes, yeah, see, God, and that even reminds me, Mythical. Again, I'm I'm an, I'm not a, a pro when it comes to Pokemon. I forget you never play as the Pokemon in Pokemon. You just have them in Pokeballs, and you you fight with the Pokeballs. You don't even, you're, it's not like you're like, I'm going to be Pikachu in my adventure. You don't get to be Pikachu. You have to, like, find him, right? So... That's what's weird about Pokemon to me, man. It's it's weird. So it'd be cool if they made a Pokemon game where you are the Pokemans. I think that's a little bit more interesting to me. <clears throat> Suit it for the big screen. Breath of the Wild environments with classic turn-based turn combat. So Zelda with the Pokemon skin. You know, I'm not going to lie, Nack Jojo. That actually becomes pretty interesting to me as well. I like that idea. You know, that's... It's the big, huge, open-world Pokemon RPG area. That's kind of the thing that gets really exciting to me. That's what makes me think, okay, that's a Pokemon, ga Pokemon game I'm going to play. That'll be the one that I give in on, you know? So I'm sure it's going to be great either way. The rumor is interesting, man. I think the rumor is interesting because of how it describes Nintendo, or not Nintendo, uh, Game Freak's motivation where they were like, we're doing the same old thing. We're not going to mess with the Pokemon formula. It's going to be Pokemon like it's always been, only better on the Switch. And then the idea that they saw Odyssey and Breath of the Wild do so many crazy new things that they're like, oh, we probably should do the same thing for our game. And so maybe that that's where they're coming at this from. So that is really, really an interesting thing to me, you know? Um, I'd be perfectly happy with a nicer looking version of Red or Gold. Yeah, and I can't speak to that. Pokemon is like dog fighting. <laughs> that's, I guess that's kind of true, right? Where's the Pokemon Michael Vick edition? <laughs> is that too soon? Probably too soon. Uh, Pokemon has covered everything in spinoffs too. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because I remember when I was working for GameStop during the sixth gen, there was a lot of Pokemon games coming out for the game. Or maybe there probably wasn't a lot. I just remember uh, you guys... Tell me if I'm getting these names right. I think there's a stadium and or a coliseum. And there's also this one, this Gale of Darkness game. Am I remembering those titles right? Tell me if I'm right or wrong. And like, 
what are those? Like when they came out circa 2003 or whatever, I was like, well, these look awesome. These look like crazy huge Pokemon games. Came to find out years later that those games weren't the same as like Pokemon games. They were like weird spinoff things, right? Yes, I'm right. Okay, you guys are telling me I'm right. So all three of those, I know it's a Gale of Darkness and a Stadium and a Coliseum, those three. And I, they looked cool, man. I was like, oh, cool, like a big Pokemon console game. And and I definitely considered playing them at the time, but I never did. Um, So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what they need to do with Pokemon. I got to tell you, at the end of the day, no, they didn't, Greg. <laughs> My Broncos didn't come through for shit. <laughs> Ah, oh, they lost by three points. It's okay. It's a rebuilding, man. We're rebuilding. We're not gonna have a uh, we're not gonna have a Peyton Manning like quarterback for a long time, man. Stadium three would be everything. Yeah, see, and I don't know what the stadium and Coliseum games were. I mean, are they like Smash Brothers? Are they just fighting games? You just one on one Pokemon battles? Like, I'm not sure. Um, hello, Alisir. Just joined in. It looks like good to see ya. There's so much spinoffs. I mean, there are a lot of Pokemon spinoffs. And then, of course, we know, um, not Hey You, Pikachu. Oh, my God. What's the pic What's the camera game? Pikachu camera picto chat. Oh, God, I can't remember that darn game. Or is it Hey You, Pikachu? Um, either way, the camera one, I know, was like a big deal. Everyone loves that game. Should have come out for the Wii U. They should have done a brand new one. So... Ryo says, Rayman, Travis Touchdown, Dragonborn... Whoa. You're saying all sorts of stuff. Dragon Ball, Bomberman, Jack Frost. Jack Frost? Is that somebody I'm not familiar with? Or is that the horror guy? <laughs> and Gino for Smash 5. Dude, Rayman and Travis Touchdown make a lot of sense. And Bomberman for a Smash 5. Okay, so you guys are talking... Pokemon Snap. Thank you, guys. It's Snap. All right. Oh, my God. Not It's not Pikachu Picto Chat. <laughs> that wasn't it. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, a hundred of you said Snap. I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I just don't play those games. Um, yeah, Pokemon Snap 2, man. Mega Man 11. Will Mega Man 11 be a thing, says Ryos. Yeah, I think there's a... Well, okay, I'm sorry. I forgot Capcom is involved. So I want to say yes, but Capcom hasn't been smart for a long time. Um, let's wait till after the Resident Evil 2 remaster and see what they decide to do after that. That's my thinking, I think. Picto chat on DS. Let's go, says Josh. Okay, so I saw you guys describing... <laughs> Pikachu Picto Chat. Yeah, Tanner. I'm just giving these ideas away for free to Nintendo tonight. Gale of Darkness is really good. There's just a focus on two Pokemon battles and heavy limits on Pokemon you can catch in the areas you explore. So does that mean, was Gale of Darkness like an adventure? Because that's what it looked like. I remember opening the box when we got the shipment of that game at GameStop, and I was like, this looks cool. Is this a big, huge console adventure? Like a Pokemon adventure on the scale of a console game is what I'd want. That becomes exciting to me. So is that what Gale of Darkness was? You guys have to tell me. I never thought I would talk so much about Pokemon, you guys. You Pokemon fans are really lucky getting this much of a Pokemon conversation out from me. It also means I don't have to make a video about the Pokemon news. I mean, at this point, again, uh, Dave and OJ already kind of covered it in their videos. I'm sure John will cover it tomorrow, so no one needs to hear me talk about Pokemon. <laughs> Resident Evil 2 for Switch needs to happen, says Laker Link. Well, Laker Link, I happen to think that it will happen. I absolutely believe that that game is coming. How long have I been streaming for? Can you guys see how long I've been going for? I am curious. I'm having a really good time, so I'm not wanting to cut it off too much sooner. Um, it's just chat or gameplay too. I'm not sure what that is. Poke Park was awesome. I've never even heard of Poke Park. 58 minutes. Thank you, HT. It's 58 minutes ago. You guys are the bomb. I super appreciate you answering. Uh, Dookie. <laughs> Someone just said Dookie. Dreamcast collection for Switch. Dude, that should come out for something, Eric. A Dreamcast collection. Not only would that make myself and my younger brother very happy, but there's a lot of people I know, a lot of YouTubers you guys might, not, might know as well, who would be really excited over a Dreamcast collection, especially for the Nintendo Switch, but just in general. Uh, 70 likes so far. Yeah, bad request. You're right, man. I finally got that super chat figured out. Everyone really asked me for that, which was really cool. I was very happy to do that. And then uh, the likes, getting the likes up. Viewership is awesome. You guys are incredible. Be honest, Rob. You just want to get back to Tamriel. You are not wrong, Patrick. I even got, you guys sit it right here. 
just waiting for me to just play it and turn it back on. That is literally what I will do as soon as this is done. Um, I've already got my video filmed and uploaded for tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, the new video is going to go up. I think you guys will really, really like the video that I made for tomorrow. It's a really cool, fun Nintendo conversation. Um, that's what I try to do. So yeah, when I'm done with this, man, me and my beer are going back to Tamriel. Or Tamriel? Oh my God, I just realized you said Tamriel, Patrick, which is absolutely not Skyrim. That is Oblivion. Did you say Tamriel? I got to scroll back, buddy. Let me see here. Yep, you sure did say Tamriel. I would love Oblivion, man. Bring it on. Bring on Oblivion. And I actually told a story about Oblivion a couple of days ago, too. When Oblivion came out, uh, it was before the Wii. My roommate at the time had a brand new 360. And uh, hey, three bandits, how are you? And uh, he, he, I remember the, the day Oblivion came out, came out, I watched him playing it that night. And he was like, well, this is incredible. But then I went to bed and he was still playing. And I came out in the morning the next day and he was still sitting on the couch playing. He had played through the entire night, the day that Oblivion came out, man. That was, that was so much fun. Some people have talked about Fallout on the, on the Switch. I think Fallout has a huge possibility. If Bethesda, Doom, if Doom sales and Skyrim sales are as good as we think they're going to be, and then if, if Wolfenstein happens to also be very successful on the Switch, I think Bethesda would be crazy to not already be prepping a Fallout 4 or a Fallout package or whatever for the Nintendo Switch. Although I would like to see more brand new games. What's really exciting you guys, about Wolfenstein is that it is a brand new game. We cannot undersell how badass it is that a brand new, unreleased game... Okay, well, it just released two weeks ago for PS4 and Xbox One, yes. But it was announced before then. And yes, uh, Skyrim is a part of Tamriel. You are correct, Wesley. But I corrected myself because I assume Patrick asked me that because he was trying to hint at an Oblivion game. So, and maybe I was wrong and he just meant Tamriel as far as the larger area. So, anywho, anywho, ha hey, you are definitely correct. Um, yeah, man, I mean, Wolfenstein, brand new game. So that needs to sell really well. It's borderline, possibly even more important for sales than even like Skyrim because Skyrim is six years old. So maybe the level of expectation from Bethesda and Nintendo is lower, but a brand new game, I bet they're expecting some good things out of that. And so if that stuff goes well, bring on a Fallout for the Nintendo Switch and also other new games. I mean, whatever, Evil Within, man. I really wish Evil Within 2 was coming out. That would have been really exciting. Uh, do you think it's possible for Elder Scrolls 6 to come to Switch? Here's why I'm going to say no, Josh. Uh, it's a good question. The reason I'm going to say no is because I think Elder Scrolls 6 is still like four years away. Four or five years away. And I know it sucks to think about that, <clears throat> but because I, think, because I think that that game is so far away, it almost for sure is that far away, I don't think the Switch is going to be Nintendo's console at the time that Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. So what would be better is if the Elder Scrolls 6 comes out on Nintendo's next console. Whatever that turns out to be, Switch 2, handheld, home console, another hybrid, whatever it is, we would want Elder Scrolls 6 on the next Nintendo console. So, why you gotta be so mad, Darth Maul? He's just a grumpy dude. He's been cut in half. He's had a bad day. <laughs> we actually watched uh, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones last night. We're going through the um, machete order of all the Star Wars films leading up to Episode 8. So, we had a whole group of people over last night. Lots of food, lots of drink, uh, lots of Star Wars awesomeness. It was, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. So... Can't wait to hear the theme song when Pokemon comes on the Switch. Yeah. Cuphead will sell better on Switch than Xbox One. Well, I mean, it would sell really well. Let's let's not let's not downplay the great sales of, of Cuphead on the Xbox. You know, the Xbox, the poor, unfortunate Xbox that's totally drowning and they're not getting any games and the sales have slowed down. And um, the Xbox One X is like weird and no one knows why it exists. But then Cuphead comes out exclusive to the Xbox and Windows. And it sells a million copies. That's awesome. So, oh my God, now this is podcasting. High five, Laker Link. That is the best comment of the day. Oh my God, that is so great. Um, but yeah, I mean, Cuphead did really sell really, really great on the Xbox One. That being said, if it was on the Switch, yeah, it would do it would do gang busters. Uh, uh, Takara says they haven't even started development on Elder Scrolls Six. I mean. That's probably close to true, but that's ultimately what I was getting at. I remember when Fallout 4 came out, 
You know, I mean, even right when Fallout 4 was brand new, people are like, oh man, Elder Scrolls 6 next, right? What about that? And I remember Todd Howard was like, give us time. We just finished this incredibly epic long game. We had like a, whatever, four, five, six year, or not even that. Oh my God. Uh, 2008 for Fallout 3 and then 2015, I think, for Fallout 4. So seven years to develop Fallout 4. Yeah, they needed some time off. He's like, trust me, more stuff will come, Elder Scrolls, whatever, but we need some time. So I feel like they probably took a year off before they started any de any development. Now, two years later, I'm willing to bet some early pre-prep on Elder Scrolls 6 has started. They're probably doing some very, very early stuff on that game right now. But it does mean that Elder Scrolls 6 will still be very, very far away. <laughs> Do I think Angry Birds will come to Switch? <laughs> Is Angry Birds Angry Birds even still real? Does that is that still around? I want to play Cat Quest Two. Cat Quest Tune says Knack Jojo. But it's one hundred percent sure Cuphead is never coming to other platforms. Maybe a sequel could. Yeah, I mean that'd be fine. I don't need that game to come to the Switch. It would be great if it did, but I mean I have an Xbox. I need to finally just uh, take the plunge and buy it. But I'm really wanting to pick up. Uh, as far as indie games. I want to pick up Cuphead. I need to get Steam World Dig Two, and I want to get Rocket League on the Switch. Those are ones I still need to get to. But I'm, I'm, I've got two games. I'm spending a lot of time on now. I'm going to get through those, and Xenoblade's going to come out after Xenoblade. That's what I'm going to start doing my backlog stuff. Uh, Angry Birds is still being milked to death. You have no idea how many games are coming out. There you go. I have, I have no clue. <clears throat> Three Bandits says, when will Nintendo fix the online voice chat problem? That is a good question because that is a problem and it absolutely does need to be fixed and addressed. And I do think that they are doing something to improve it. I don't know when we'll see it, but they got to figure that out soon. It's really damaging the situation they're in there because they need to fix that online thing. Uh, Nack Jojo says, are you in the Northwest? Yeah, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. That is where I live. Uh, do you want new Super Metroid in the vein of new Super Mario Brothers? Yeah, man. It would be uh, it would be really, really hard. I should get Spawn Wave on Facebook Live, Zach? I don't know why we would do that. I mean, the Spawncast does so well on YouTube. And then, of course, he uploads it to iTunes and to uh, SoundCloud as well. And we get, like, crazy, crazy viewership on those. On those. I mean, I shouldn't say we. I've only been on a couple. But you know what I mean. Like, he gets crazy good views on on those things and he gets really good likes and it's always getting better and he's getting he's gotten some really huge guests and so and i know some other things he's even working at um in the future too that's going to be really cool so i don't know facebook live i mean who uses facebook live facebook is so lame to me <laughs> so maybe i'm just i'm just like kind of biased against facebook i mean i use it but it's just like whatever twitter is so much better um I am not in Seattle, but yes, I am I am a few hours away from Seattle. I am closer to Portland, Oregon, if that helps. I'm not in Portland, but I'm close to Portland. That's where I live. West Coast is the best coast. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Um, will there be a follow-up to Metroid Fusion? Crimson asks, you know what? I, I plan on making a video about this sometime pretty soon. It's been on my list. I think a lot of YouTubers will tell you this. We make like lists of like ideas and video topics i'm usually entering them into my phone i'm like ooh, that would be a good thing sometimes i'm listening to some other video on youtube you know like oj's or mizzatees or spawn ways whatever you know all sorts of other things rich review tech usa is kind of funny something comes up and i'm like that's an idea i'm gonna i'm gonna make a video about this and i have also meant to make a video about that question about the next metroid and uh Oh wow, Squid says I used to date a girl who lived near Hills Hillsboro, Oregon. Yeah, that's really that's really close to me. We were actually living in a, la a year and a half, almost two years ago. We were living in Beaverton, Oregon. Uh, not anymore, but that's where we were for a while. So yeah, Hillsboro is really close, man. That's so crazy. Um, what was I saying? I don't even know. Oh yeah, uh, the Metroid thing. So anyway, I do want to make a video about Metroid, a sequel to Metroid Fusion, Metroid Five. Uh, and so I don't want to spoil that video too much, but the, the quick version is that, yes, I think that there's a possibility they do that. So it's really exciting. And whenever I get to make a video, it'll be a really, really exciting. Yeah, dude, Robert Garza says misery signals is a really good band. Yes, they are. They are one of my favorite, probably top five favorite bands of all time. 
And uh, they just did a short tour through the Pacific Northwest last year. First time they've toured in a decade. And I did get to see them and I got to meet some of them. And it was just absolutely fantastic, man. So good taste in music, buddy. <laughs> My ex-wife lives in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, that's like, that's a couple hours away. Oh, Zach says I meant get Spawn Wave on this show. I mean, I, he'd probably do it if I asked him to, but, and I've said a couple times, I, I definitely think about, uh, there is no gambling on this chat. No, there is no gambling in Toki. <laughs> Just a super chat. Ain't no gambling, ain't no microtransactions for Rob. You get the full Rob experience with no purchase necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, John is, is like a really busy guy uh, and I'm sure he would do it. I've thought about doing guests on here and I definitely have thought about, you know, John would be good. OJ would be great. Ms. T, some of the juices loose guys to do just like a one-on-one -on -one. Patrick from Nintendo talk. You know, I don't know if you're still watching buddy, but I've definitely thought about doing like, uh, I know Rob is not interested, but OJ is going to be excited like me. I don't know what you're talking about there. I'm really curious. OJ has been tweeting. Oh, Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about Valkyria. So, um, yeah, he'll be nailing the Valkyria thing. I have not much to say about Valkyria Chronicles because, like I said, I couldn't even remember if the first one was PS1 or not. So, um, What franchise do I think is the most milked? Please not RGT85, Nack Jojo. Hey, man, Sean, Sean's my buddy. I, I, I love Sean. He's a really cool dude. He's a really funny guy. Um, so one day I might actually ask him to do it too. But I have I've yet to set up a... I've yet to set up, that's weird, <laughs> um, anything as far as doing a, a, like a group thing. But I like the idea of like delivering on the rule of two review, rule of two concept where I do two person podcast chats every once in a while. That's the idea. So I would bring on like Patrick, for example, again, Nintendo Talk Patrick and um, OJ and other people like that to kind of do that stuff. But uh, I don't know. 2018 is going to be the year of the JRPGs for both Switch and PS4. Yeah, what's wrong with RGT, man? Archie T is my boy. Sean is awesome. Rob is greater than Rich, says Mighty Ryan. Oh, man, that is a hell of a compliment. I love Rich, man. I like Review Tech USA, you guys. I really, really do. Move my, my microphone here. Let me check some of my stuff real quick. Stream is going super well, you guys. There's a lot of you guys here. Really excited. A lot of likes, too. If I got to 100 likes, that would be awesome. So I'm just going to say, hey, 100 likes. Um, Sammy says, Rob, did you finally check out the 100% completion bonus gallery in Samus Returns? No, <laughs> I've been too busy. It's so hard for me to get to things, man. And it's, it's really dumb. I don't mind Rich. He's an old guy like us. Yeah, Takara. <clears throat> Jason says, cough, cough. Oh yeah. Well, Jason, you got to get on Google Hangouts. I never even thought about that. If you get on Hangouts, we could do it. But Jason, we want to do an in-person thing. I think that's a little bit more exciting than doing the video thing. <clears throat> Jason is my homie. He's my real life. My IRL homie. Star Wars Rule of Two with Misa, Jaja Banks. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Similar to Xenoblade, Valkyria is a niche JRPG in the West. Yeah, but I do think that, again, because of the Switch effect, Xenoblade is going to be bigger than probably the first two games were. Valkyria being on the Switch could also make it bigger than previous ones have been in the past. Um, Rich did a cool video about the switch being good for him now that he's busy with his family. Exactly. Josh, that's, what's really cool. Like it's, I, I saw that video. He's like, it might be my favorite console of all time. He said he still prefers PC gaming overall, but as far as consoles that probably the switch is his favorite. And it's like, yeah, man, when you're an adult, when you're busy, you work like him, he's got, he's got a family, he's got a brand new son. He's like engaged. I get it, man. Like playing games is hard. You guys like sometimes doing something as simple as pulling up a video on my 3ds is like, Oh shit, dude, I don't have time. Like I don't think about this stuff and I just got a promotion at work. So I'm so busy, you know, and I do the band, you know, granted we freaking fell apart today, which really sucks, but I do the band as well. So, uh, three bandits says, I assumed you were from Denver because of your hat. Well, I am from Denver. My girlfriend and I only moved out to the West coast two years ago. But we are Colorado Denver natives. Colorado is the best state. Denver is the best city in the United States. Confirmed. <laughs> so yeah, we're from Denver, man. And uh, we miss it regularly. We've made it back many times since moving. So. F-Zero is being made by Neo Team. Oh, a fast racing Neo. Everyone wants that. But yeah, there is no team here, Nack. You're totally correct. There's no NFL team. There's no NHL team. And it's really sad to me. 
I really want Disney to collab with Factor 5 and Nintendo and bringing the canceled Rogue Leaders Rogue Squadron for the Switch. Yeah, I made a whole video about that, man. It would be really, really interesting. What franch Oh yeah, what franchises would you call milk? I did I did read that question, then I didn't answer it. Um it's I mean, even though I like Call of Duty, I think it has to be Call of Duty because it's been annual for like 10 years now. And again, I like the games, but um, yes, Eric, we did a lot of talking about Pokemon already. Um, but the stream, I think this might be the first one I decide to leave up after the fact, so you should be able to catch it. Um, but we did a whole thing on Pokemon like probably 10 minutes ago. So I keep I keep not answering this question. Um, yeah, Call of Duty, obviously a while ago we would have said Assassin's Creed, but they finally took a year off. I still think it counts as pretty milked. Um, I don't know about milked other than other than those ones, man, because, you know, games get sequels. And I feel like if the sequels come out sporadically and if they're good, then I don't really care, you know, because some people would say a Mario is milked. And I don't think many of us would agree with that, but some people could make that case. So just is what it is. Uh, Ryan says, do you think Uncharted will go on with a new Drake in the lead? And how about Uncharted in the past with Sully in his 20s? There is some cool stuff to that, man. Sully is such a good character. I certainly want Uncharted to continue. The ending to Uncharted 4, like, damn near brought me to tears. My girlfriend and I were just like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. It's epic. A uh, really good ending and conclusion to that incredible series and the amazing characters. Chloe for life, by the way. Um, so, yeah, it's possible. Maybe Lost Legacy was them trying to kind of get the idea out there that you can play an Uncharted experience with no Nathan Drake, you know, or where you're not playing as Nathan Drake. So yeah, there's a possibility that we do something very soon with uh, Uncharted. I certainly hope that they continue it. I'd just love to see anyone besides EA make a Star Wars game. Yeah, we're all with it, man. You know, I'm enjoying Battlefront 2. I know my buddy Jason's enjoying Battlefront 2. It is a good game as far as gameplay and the campaign story. But EA messed up. EA's got a bad business model. EA is not for the gamer. And they're getting called on their shit for good reason. I want EA to absolutely be... Or I should say, I want the Star Wars license to be yanked away from EA so, so badly, man. Like, they, honestly, and even the first Battlefront, there was problems with that. There's a lot of problems with Battlefront 2. They're not delivering, man. But the problem is they're making money. They made money with that first Battlefront game. So that's all the big wigs care about. But if Battlefront 2 doesn't make the right kind of money, then maybe that changes. Maybe just all the backlash on social media and anything changes. Lucasfilm's decision, I don't know, man. Um, Evan Rao asks what my gr dream game for the Switch is. Um, and honestly, I'm already getting my dream game. It's a new Metroid game. Like Metroid Prime 4 is my dream game for sure. Um, other than that, my other dream game is a No More Heroes game, and we're getting that. So we got those two. I would love for um, Beyond Good and Evil to make it to the Switch, but I don't really need that because it's coming. No matter what platform it ends up releasing on, I'll get to play it. Um, Oh my god. I skipped Battlefront 2. I wouldn't pass the credit check. High five. That's a good one. That could be on a t-shirt. Um, Radio Ron Santos says, so I started playing Samus Returns. Kind of far. Not really, but I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a couple places you can get stuck, man. Especially if you're not familiar with Metroid. Like, the way you traverse and unlock areas in a Metroid game, you will get stuck. Like, that's the best, that's the best kind of Metroid game is when you get stuck in. Where are you stuck, Radio? I'm curious. You should tell me where you're stuck. Why hasn't Activision put anything on the Switch? Shouldn't they be testing the waters? Well, I believe there's their Skylanders game released on the Switch because they are doing Skylanders. Again, myself and Robert from Gaming With Me broke the news on the touchscreen from Skylanders with that video of the guy showing it to us. That was our video footage. Um, let me look at it. I know it's like Skylanders isn't exciting like other games are, but yeah, man. Oh, wait, that's not on the Switch. Is that on the, yeah, Switch reviews. Yep, there's Skylanders on the Switch. So that's your Activision game for now. <laughs> I know we'd rather have other things, but that's what we got. And it's also why, uh, it's also why I do think that we will see Call of Duty on the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> Evil Angel says, what would I like to see in Nintendo's next console? Um, the things I want to see that I know we won't, that we can't 100% expect would probably be for them to have had 
a, a better relationship with third parties from the start and have some of the multi-platform third-party games releasing day and date alongside on a regular basis on the Nintendo console. I mean, because everything else I know we're going to get. Nintendo's going to make great games. Like, what do we need? Like, they're going to make great games. They're going to have some quirky, innovative idea that's going to be really cool. We know they're going to do those things. But what do we not know? Will the third-party situation be better from day one? That's the question. And so I would like to see that because I like third parties just as much as Nintendo stuff. So <laughs> the YouTube equivalent of NASCAR, the way you talk in circles, Rob. I know, man. I just I have a chat in front of me. And so I start on an idea and then someone's question or comment comes up that I like and I don't want to forget it. So I jump right into that and I don't get to finish my 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 sentences and my thoughts. It's, I'm really bad at it, you guys. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't make it super unentertaining. Um, well, I made it to area two, just got the power suit, green ore protects you there. There's a Metro in the area. I can't seem to, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, for what it's worth, if you want to make it easy, you can scan. I don't know if you have the Amiibo, but you can scan Metroid Amiibo and some of them, maybe just the special one will actually show you where the next Metroid is. So you have that option if you just want to find it, um, the easy way. Other than that, you just got to keep on searching, man. You just got to keep. And the, the bottom screen, well, when you get close to it, it'll let you know. It'll start beeping and making a noise and flashing on you, like <laughs> talking, talking, talking. Squirrel! What was I talking about? That's me. I am that guy from Up. That uh, that dog. Yeah, I need to watch those chosen memories. I'm so embarrassed I forgot to do that after that last uh, live stream. Nintendo already produced Super Mario Odyssey, and that game is a masterpiece. Nintendo did an awesome job in that game, yeah. Three Bandit said, I've never played a Metroid game. I have no idea what it's about. It's about being an awesome bounty hunter and just being awesome. That's it. That's all you need to know. You should definitely do it. So Definitely check it out. The Cone of Shame. Mac Jojo says, wow, this is by far the best stream slash chat I've come across. Dude, thank you so much, man. That was a really good, nice compliment. I uh, appreciate it. Loved Gale of Darkness on the GameCube. It was an adventure, but really linear. So, yeah, see, I should probably look up. I'm going to probably be shutting this down pretty soon here, guys. But let me look up some video on Gale of Darkness, just so I get an idea of like what it actually looks like, you know? Since we spent so much time talking about it. Gale of um, Darkness. Gale of Darkness. Gameplay. Let me add that. I, I never, I just never forgot that that game existed for some reason. Like Pokemon Gale of Darkness GameCube. I always remembered that title. And so it really fit into the uh, Pokemon conversation we had earlier as a memory of that game. Oh, that's straight from the startup menu. Okay. So, and forgive me, guys. I'm watching this gameplay here. And it's like, I don't really see a lot happening. Is it still like turn-based battles? Is that kind of how it works in Gale of Darkness, you guys? Same kind of thing? Because that's all I'm seeing is just like one long turn-based battle fight, but it's like with a 3D engine. Whoops, that's what I need right there. Whoa. Damn, Gale of Darkness and Coliseum is a top three Pokemon game for you. Wow, that's I've not heard many Pokemon fans say that. Um, they're made by Game Freak, super good games. You will like them. Turn-based 3D engine. Okay. So, so you guys have to, again, I you Pokemon fans have to answer this for me. Does that not make Gale of Darkness like just an actual normal Pokemon game only for a console in 3D? I mean, is that game different from what normal Pokemon games are, the handheld ones? Like, what, why isn't that considered, like, one of the generational Pokemon games? Because to me, it sounds like that's what it is. It's a Pokemon game. You, you run around, you get into real-time, or you get into turn-based battles with your Pokemon, only it's in 3D with console-level graphics and scale. So, to me, that seems like the epic, huge RPG Pokemon game people have wanted on consoles for decades. So, it sounds like it already exists with Gale of Darkness. So, I'm just curious how that fits into it. And I mean, generation equals new Pokemon, but doesn't it also equal the generation like, you know, red and red and blue or red, yellow and blue are a generation. And then there's like gold and silver is a generation. And then ruby red and gold, 
super leaf gold or whatever like black and white and x and y aren't those pokemon generations or am i totally thinking of that wrong you could tell a guy you could tell rob does not play his pokemon man i'm just not into pokemon you can only use pokemon you save you didn't you don't technically capture pokemon like the handheld pokemon okay hmm interesting So the idea of the handheld ones is that you are collecting Pokemon and you're keeping them like Pokemon go, right? Like you're like, Oh, I have now I own this animal in this ball kind of thing. Vincent says Pokemon is silly. Yeah, it is silly, but it's, you know, people love it. So I got nothing against it. Honestly, a lot of the things we all like is pretty silly. If you think about it, game freak didn't develop those. They were outsourced. Okay. I love that I could trust you guys to know Pokemon where it's like one of the few things I'm just not familiar with. And I've got you guys with all the answers here. <laughs> God, I hate Pokemon Go. <laughs> I liked it. I only played it like once or twice with my girlfriend, but I liked it. I want to play it more actually. Super Leaf Gold. Pokemon is also a slave simulator. Yeah, kind of. Game Freak did make them. Okay, now there's all sorts of debates. All sorts of different debates. Well, I mean, you know, we we talked a lot about Skyrim. And we talked a lot about Pokemon. Yeah, different people have different opinions, says Ian. I'll tell you what, it reminds me of, <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. It reminds me of um, Final Fantasy, which is another series. I have way more experience with Final Fantasy than I do Pokemon. But I've always really enjoyed and gotten a kick out of watching Final Fantasy fans rip each other to shreds over which are the good Final Fantasies and which are the bad ones. Which is the best one and which is the bad one? Seven is the best. No, eight's the best. No, six. No, no, one. No, it's nine. No, it's 10. I mean, oh my God, it's so funny to me. And I have so many friends who are diehard invested in that, in that debate. Um, and to me, it's like with Pokemon, I'm basically hearing the same thing. Like, you know, oh, yellow's the best. No, it's the gold that's the best. No, it's the ruby red that's the best or whatever. Um, I think the only thing I remember is X and Y were heavily disliked or maybe it was black and white i don't remember um but yeah so we talked about skyrim oh my god it's so good and we talked about the pokemon rumors crazy stuff i'm very curious to see what happens there um we didn't really talk about black friday games but that's okay we all know we're going to spend a lot of money on black friday i'll even i'm gonna here's what i'll do i'll quickly run over a couple of things i plan on picking up on black friday at least the ones that I'm most interested in. I'm probably not going to buy every game because I don't need to spend all that money on those games. Um, I think on the Switch, based on the leaked Black Friday stuff, the only game I saw that I'm going to buy is probably Sonic Forces. Um, nothing else as far as Switch games on sale is interesting to me at all. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for sure. Evil Within 2 for sure. Um, what else? I have so many other games. I find it interesting. Shadow of War is on sale for 25 bucks. I almost want to do that. I'm probably going to pick up The Last of Us Remastered. I never bought that, and I would like to play through that game again. It's been a long time. And it's only 10 bucks. What else? Evil Within 2. Dishonored 2. I, oh, I do kind of want to play Dishonored 2. Maybe that's it. Oh, the Bioshock collection might not be bad. That's 20 bucks for the Bioshock collection. Oh, my God. Video games. There's too many, you guys. Why is there so many damned video games? What in the hell? This is madness. Oh, Nier. I'm sorry. Nier. Absolutely. I have to have Nier in my life. I want that game so badly. It's platinum. It got incredible reviews. It looks amazing. Horizon, Evil Within, and Nier are probably the three at the top. And then for Switch, it's going to be Sonic Forces. Because it's like 20 bucks, man. It's a really good deal. Yeah, I want a new Bioshock too, Gibby. I'm all about Bioshock all about it hey we hit we hit 100 likes you guys are awesome here i am close to the end here had a couple of super chats you guys who did the donations were so awesome thank you so much near may be coming to switch i have not heard that rumor is that true stakona where'd you hear that that's that sounds new near coming to switch i don't know man i would love it near and code vein are games that i would wait to play on the switch if they were going to come Knack Judge says, I'm going to pick up Sonic, Lego Worlds, Mario Rabbits, because I gave it to my nephew, Horizon Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn. Who knows what else? Yeah, there's so much stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen the list or not. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to link just in case. If you guys uh, scroll down to the bottom of this GameSpot article, 
there's a list of like all the leaked stuff. So I would go there for sure. Genius Sonority made the console Pokemon. They are a side company inside the Pokemon company, but they have nothing to do with the handheld Pokemon. Hmm. What happened to the Raindrop? Oh, the Rainway app. Are you talking about the Rainway app? Raindrop is an engine that Ubisoft employs, but Rainway is the app you might be talking about, Nack Jojo, that allows you to stream PC games to different devices, and it's running on the Switch. Um, it hasn't released yet. It exists. It runs. I don't think that it's gone through all the necessary Nintendo paperwork it needs to to actually release. Uh, Sammy says, buy The Last Guardian 2 on PS4. Seems like you seem like a guy that would enjoy that. Do you mean this Last Guardian? <laughs> I do have this game. I have Last Guardian. I have a love-hate relationship with Last Guardian, man. I'll tell you what. Oh, Snowdrop. Thank you, Vincent, for the correction. Duh. <laughs> Raindrop. I confuse Raindrop and Rainway and Snowdrop. Uh, Snowdrop is the engine. Rainway is the app. Thank you. Um, but yeah, Last Guardian, man. That's a That's a game. That is a video game. It's interesting. One day I should go back and finish it. There's stuff I like about it. Um, stitched, stitched sketch says seemed like platinum was teasing something for switch a while back, but nothing ever came of it. Probably just held back because last half of the year was so packed. I just think they're not ready to show it, but for sure platinum, I think is working on a big game and for sure it has a good chance at coming to switch and for sure it has a good chance at being Bayonetta three. I am in the camp on all of those, man. They're all possible. Am I getting Xenoblade? Yes, I am getting Xenoblade. I'm very excited. Is anyone here a brony? Where the bronies at? <laughs> I'm not a brony, but I got no hate for bronies. If that's you, you do you, boo. That's what I got to say. Everyone gets to do the thing they like. Al says, buy back all the old games you stupidly sold trade as a child because that's what I'm doing. I hate young me. What a prick he was. <laughs> that is amazing. Dude, I feel the same way. How many times I do this all the time where I'm like, oh, this game on the, on the GameCube that I loved. I really want to play that again. I pull it up on Amazon and it's like, oh, $85. <laughs> God. Oh my God. That is so funny. It's taught me not to trade in games anymore, man. I do it very rarely anymore. That is so funny, man. Oh my gosh. Sammy says, oh yeah, there's a lot of love hate towards the game. You didn't finish it. The ending is amazing. I do want to finish it. My girlfriend and I enjoyed what we did from it. The gameplay really bothers me, but there's a lot that I like about it. And you're telling me the ending is amazing. So one day I'll go back to it. But yeah, man, I mean, I'm a Nintendo guy, but I, I legit play and support my PlayStation and Xbox like nobody's business, you guys. Like, I really do. So most important games on all consoles, I have. I'm very, I'm very proud of that. I really like Ico. Ico was so awesome when I first played it on the PS2. I played it in the, uh, the remaster on the PS3, and it didn't age very well, and that was unfortunate to me, so... Pyra is thick. <laughs> yes, she is. That was that's not her original name. What's her name before Pyra? Isn't it Mira or Mithra or I can't remember now. I think she turns into Pyra. Um, but she looks quite nice. <laughs> Golden Sun for the Switch, hopefully. Yeah, man. I'm all about it. I'm excited to see what Bethesda's working on. Supposedly a new sci-fi IP. Yeah, someone even brought the name up earlier. It's like Starfield, I think is what it's called. Uh, I can't remember for sure, but I'm really curious if that's going to be like as epic as most of their games. Oh, as a pirate turns into Mithra, I must have had it backwards. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, I know that the same Stakona. I just thought that, I thought Mithra was the first incarnation and then she turned into Pyra. I actually still think that's right. Are you sure, Tony? I think that maybe you're wrong. Either way, it doesn't matter. They're the same person. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus coming to PS4. Am I getting it? Yes. I'm very excited. I never played Shadow of the Colossus. So I'm super excited to have access to that game. I really can't wait. It looks really good on the PS4. Really, really good. <clears throat> he is right. I assume, yeah. So maybe he's right, I guess. So it's Pyra first, then Mithra. Definitely do for another Star Fox. I agree. Well do i mean we want one but you know star fox here was just last year and it didn't go too well what's up blue arrow what's up bro <clears throat> 
pretty close to the end of the stream here. Mario is the best waifu. <laughs> Congrats on surpassing 100 likes. Thank you so much, Tony. It feels really good. 103 likes, one dislike. Someone doesn't like my face. That's okay. I just hope they disliked and they left. <laughs> Who disliked this? Nintendo is selling to China 2019. I think actually 2018 is when they're going to they're going to be launching uh pretty soon in China. I want an awesome redemption for Star Fox. Me too, Gibby. That's exactly why I predict Star Fox is coming and they just need to make it that redemption title. That's all they need to do. Later, Tony. Good to see you, man. Glad you made it in. Um RGT85 did what did Sean do? What did he do? Um it was a misclick, Rob. Oh, wow. There, it went away. <laughs> oh, thanks, Takara. That's so funny. Or someone corrected it, or I don't know. I mean, hey, you know, I'm not going to tell people not to dislike. If they dislike, I can take it. You can dislike. But it's nice to see it go away. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to lie about that. It's nice to see it go away. Nintendo won't stop making Star Fox. I mostly agree with that, Stakona. I think that they're going to give it another good shot. I really do. It's been a rocky road for Star Fox, but um, Robbie, Robbie. Rob, what do you think about the new Kirby game for the Switch? I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. We shall miss you, man. Always a pleasure, chill, to watch your vids. Yeah, thanks, Radio. Um, yeah, I'm excited for Kirby, man. I Just because I'm just all about a new Nintendo side-scroller. Like, I'm just, just give it to me, you know? Um, my pick for Game of the Year is uh, Breath of the Wild, for sure. Unquestionable. Very close is Odyssey and Resident Evil 7. Those are very high on my list. Um, and now there's two dislikes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Everyone's having fun with the dislike button. So if you hate me, that's fine. You can dislike away. Um, yeah, those are those are pretty much the three at the top of my list right now. Um, I mean, I, I really think, I'm sure Horizon would be up there. I just didn't have a chance to get it. No, I won't be on the Juices Loose Phantom. I can't do Mondays anymore. It really sucks. I miss the Juices Loose, but uh, Mondays are no good for me. But that's, that's why the spawn cast has become great because those are on Saturdays and I can do most Saturdays at that time. Not always. Like I couldn't do it last night, but Saturday, Saturday evenings, that's six o'clock my time. That's a good time for me to do a podcast and still be able to go out for, for like drinks or something after if we want. So, but Mondays, I just can't do Mondays. I just can't work. is just, it messes me up. Um, I thought you didn't like Kirby that much. You said you hated Planet Robobot. And it's a mix of Planet Robobot 64 and Kirby Superstar. Well, yeah, I didn't like Planet Robobot, but that doesn't mean I don't like Kirby. I just thought Planet Robobot was disappointing and a baby game. But Epic Yarn and uh, Rainbow Curse are awesome. I love those games. I just didn't like Planet Robobot. I thought it was bad. Um, so I I like Kirby. I just I hope that this game is really awesome. I really didn't. I missed the GameCube Kirby. I really wanted to play that. Um, or well, I'm sorry, not the GameCube. I'm sorry, the Wii Kirby that came out right near the end after Epic Yarn. I really wanted to play that. Yeah, and I don't know Superstar. I've never played that game, so yeah. Shadow Clasher says standalone Wal Waluigi game will complete my life. Me too, bro. I'm all about that Waluigi life. Waluigi Walla World. Let's do it. Come on, Nintendo, make it happen. Why are they slacking with virtual console for Switch, though? Um, I discussed this in a video. It's one of my most popular videos <clears throat> a couple months ago. The theory that I have, and it's only a theory, is that the SNES and the NES Classic are a great way to make money selling old games. Also, when the online service launches next year, they're going to have access to rotating NES and Super NES games and stuff as well. Not to mention... The, uh, the arcade classics thing that they launched recently where they're doing like arcade games and all these different things. So I feel like Nintendo wants to just get through that kind of stuff and let people buy money through that before they end up selling like a virtual console kind of thing. But I think eventually we'll get something like that, like the virtual console. It's taken way too long though. Way, way too long. Mr. Jangle says, this is random. Do you have any advice for starting a Nintendo YouTube channel while still being original um i mean i guess i do the biggest thing for starting a youtube channel is to just know how you want to do it so you talk about being original and i can't tell you how to be original no one can tell another person i don't think how to be original 
I think you just need to, to think about how you want to create video content talking about Nintendo and think about how you want to do it that's just comfortable for you. I would just say if you do what is right for you, then you'll make good content. Just be true to yourself. Have fun doing it. I tweeted this a couple of weeks ago. If you're fun, if you're having fun and you're being true to yourself, that's all you really need to do to actually make yourself stand out. Um, be yourself. Hey, Vincent, dude, here, here's some money because you are likable. Thank you, Vincent, so much. I really appreciate the donation. Always feel free to throw a question on there too if you want. I, I really like giving special attention to someone if you're going to do a donation. But thank you, Vincent. Very, very cool, man. Um, yeah, and you know, so just do the thing that's interesting to you. You know, you know Nintendo. You know why you like Nintendo. So just talk about Nintendo in the way that's that you like. If you want to do fancy stuff with your videos, what you need to do is you do need to invest some money. You have to have editing software, and you're definitely going to want a um, you're definitely going to want a capture card. So you need to have a capture card to capture video, and you're going to need to know how to use your editing software and record your videos and edit it together in a way that's good for you. I recommend YouTube tutorials on editing software. It's really going to help you. So good question, man. Best of luck. And you know what else I'll say? Anyone can do it. The coolest thing about YouTube is all you got to do is just, <laughs> Jason says, do the do, bro. Are you paying me back for the Mountain Dews I bought you last night? You certainly don't have to do that, but thanks, bro. That is so funny, Jason. Um, but yeah, anyone can do it, man. Anyone can start a YouTube channel. That's what's really cool about it. And, okay, so Ryan says Power Glove 2 in 2018. I don't want to spoil anything for tomorrow's video, but it's hilarious that you brought up the Power Glove just now for reasons that I'm not going to say, but that's just really funny to me. Don't do drugs. Be original. I agree, Zolato. That's good advice. Uh, Squid Vicious says uh, be consistent, put out content regularly. That is actually very true. That is one of the weird, weirdly obvious secrets to YouTube that I think some people don't get. If you are not consistent, you will fade away. Not fade away. You you just won't you won't get out there. People won't see your video. You won't be in the algorithm. People won't know to count on you or trust on you. You won't seem like a channel that they should click subscribe on because there's never videos put up. I mean, you you got to be consistent. And that's one of the hardest things to do. Uh, bad request. I saw that there is a new AVGN today, but I have yet to watch it. I'm very excited because he is the best ever. He is the absolute best. <clears throat> uh, spend money to make money, says King of Heart. Yeah, I mean, kind of. That's kind of true. But I recommend, I guess I can't say don't do it for the money. Like uh, Power Glove 2, even better. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. You should stream raid RGT85 when you are done, says Gintoki. Thank you for the donation again. Is he streaming right now? I mean, I need to I need to end I need to end my stream pretty soon anyway, but we should totally stream raid him. Um let me pull him up here. Yeah, he totally is. That's so funny. He's streaming Doom. The new AVGN was solid, not his best, but pretty funny as always. Don't do it for money, he says. Everyone stop giving money. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tell you to stop giving me money or anything, but I'm just saying motivation. Just make sure your motivation is in the right place. Do it because you're going to have fun. And if you get lucky, you can make some money off of it. That That's what I took into. I'll end here. I should end here, and then I want everyone to go and stream raid uh, Sean. But what I recommend is... Do it because you're going to be excited for it and think that in the back of your head, hey, if it works out, you can make some money. You can make some money doing it. I think that that's, that's what helped me. So 10 minute plus for that monetization. That's not how it works, Jason, but thanks. Um, <clears throat> new to your stream, but I've, shoved, I've subbed for a long time. This question may have already been asked, but what are some other third-party games then SR you want to buy? I'm not sure what SR is. Do you need a PayPal account to accept donation on YouTube? I think to give donations you do, but I mean, not to accept them. So I don't have a PayPal. Um, you have to make food first before any chat can like it, I guess. What a fun stream. Have a great night. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should. Uh, yeah, if you don't have fun, you'll be miserable. That is so name true. So yeah, I am actually uh G Sanders to Skyrim. I am I am all into my I gotta get back into Skyrim. I'm just Jones and Fort. So 
This was a blast. Fantastic stream. You guys are fantastic. I got a couple of donations. Thank you guys all so much for doing some donations. That means a lot. My good homie Jason is in the chat. Good to see you through the internet, Jason. I'm sure I'll see you in a couple of days watching Justice League together. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you for the questions. Pokemon rumors are insane. Switch is amazing. or uh, Skyrim is amazing on the Switch. Having a lot of fun. So I hope you guys had fun for the stream. And um, look for next week. I will definitely be doing another stream next week as well. I'm really enjoying these. Everyone, please go and stream Raid Sean. Please, please do it. I'm going to, uh, I'll put a link to his stream. You guys got to do it. I totally want to see that happen. Yeah, peace, guys. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I have so much fun doing these. <laughs> raid. Raid the man. <laughs> um, awesome, Stitched. The car, awesome. All right, bye, guys. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, and um, I will just see you guys next time. Bye.